Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's edition of Physics. In this edition of Physics, we are going to look at friction. Imagine that you are pushing on a heavy object, like a refrigerator or a big box or something, and you're pushing and it doesn't move, and you push harder and you push harder and you push harder, and suddenly you start to stumble a little bit, and then you push and you move forward at a constant speed. As you are pushing harder and harder and harder, friction is opposing that motion. So I'm pushing, friction's pushing back the other way, harder and harder and harder. So we see that when an object doesn't move, friction can change in size. There's not any friction on my refrigerator, really. So I start to push it, and there's a little bit, and I push harder, there's a little bit more, I push harder, there's a little bit more. And as I push harder, friction has to oppose more so that my object doesn't move. Once I started in motion, I kind of stumbled a little bit, and then I'm able to push it at a nice constant velocity. So I see that friction then becomes constant as I'm moving. So this shows us that there are two types of friction. There is a static friction, non-moving, and a kinetic friction, or moving. And we can see that the maximum static friction is generally always larger than the kinetic friction, because it's harder to get an object moving than to keep it moving. Why? I leave that question to you. I know I'm going to ask it in my class next time. So you might want to spend a few moments thinking about why is it harder to get an object moving than to keep it moving. We can see our two types of friction. We have our static F sub S and our kinetic F sub K for our non-moving and moving frictions. Let's look at the cause of friction. If you have a nice smooth tabletop, then it's pretty smooth. But if you get down on a microscopic level and you look at one object sliding across the tabletop, on a microscopic level, the object, here in my Penn State water bottle, has some ridges to it. The tabletop also has some ridges to it, and as those ridges grind across one another, Friction, it slows down. So on a microscopic level, friction is these bumps and crags grinding across one another, causing the object to slow down. We can see that, based on that description, the roughness of the objects affect the friction. Well, that's obvious. If you've ever slid on ice, ice is really smooth, you can go a far distance, there's not a lot of friction. If you've ever slid on concrete, and I have, trust me, it doesn't feel good, you don't go very far, because concrete's very rough. There's a lot of friction between you and concrete, very little friction between you and ice. And also, the harder that one object gets pushed down, pushed down on the tabletop, the more friction there's going to be, because those crags get pushed down deeper into one another as they're grinding across. Well, that pushed down is the normal force, right? Because it's the reaction of the table up on the object, so we can measure that by the normal force, not the weight, because the weight is whatever the weight is, but I can adjust the normal force on the object. So we see that friction is proportional to our two surfaces that we have, or we have flesh on ice or flesh on concrete, and also the normal force, or how hard one surface is pushing up on the other surface. Our two equations, static friction is always less than or equal to the surface coefficient, mu, times the normal force. This tricks people up sometimes, students up, because they all are so used to saying equals, 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 this one changes. Static friction changes. Remember in the refrigerator, as I pushed harder and harder and harder, it wasn't going anywhere. So as I increase my force, friction increases in the other direction so that it doesn't move. Finally, it slips, whoop, and I'm in the kinetic region. As soon as I'm in the kinetic region, I'm back to an equal sign. This is equals at the maximum. You might want to write that down. If you think you're not going to remember it, I am going to remember it, so I'm not going to write it down, but you may want to. And then mu again is our coefficient of friction. Mu is a constant. It's either given to you in a problem or asked you to solve for it. If I don't give you mu or ask you to solve for mu, you can, afford, you can assume that the surfaces are smooth, therefore frictionless. Yay! You don't have to deal with any of this crap. Mu is basically the relative stickiness of your two surfaces. How much do they want to bond together? 